Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it written in our heart and mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We'll take hold of it, be doers of it, see fruit come forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. This morning we began sharing with you on the subject of obtaining the counsel of the Lord. And we talked about the necessity of you obtaining counsel from the Lord. If you don't, you're going to be walking in the ways that are going to allow the enemy to bring much destruction against you. We saw in Isaiah chapter 11, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. That's Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, Spirit of counsel and might, Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. These are different aspects of what the Holy Spirit will bring forth in, through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit's work in you and me because he's now come to dwell in us. And notice it speaks of the spirit of counsel is to be upon every single one of us. It makes him of quick understanding. In the fear of the Lord, he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. That's the same thing that we must do. We must not judge after the sight of our eyes or reprove after the hearing of our ears. It must be in the spirit. It must be according to the word of God and not according to the soul realm or our senses or reacting according to the situations that we see in the natural realm. We are to obtain the counsel of the Lord. And we talked about many scriptures, which we're not going to go back over tonight, but we saw the fact that this counsel that is His, how He brings it to pass is by instructing us and teaching us, and then He guides us with us eye. We also see that He brings His counsel through His testimonies. Testimonies are the laws that are given, that are divinely warranted that they're true, and the testimonies that are shown forth reveal the counsel of the Lord to us. Also through the Word of God that is faithful, steadfast, dependable, and that you will come to the place of knowing the certainty of His Word as you trust in it and act upon it in your life. Also through His commands. We saw scriptures on all these things today that His commands are His counsel to you. They're not just suggestions, good ideas, they're commands. You and I are under the New Testament, we follow the New Testament commands. It also comes as counsel is in the heart of man, it's like deep water that he draws out through a man of understanding, through you get spiritual understanding through the word in the heart, it will bring forth the counsel of the Lord. Also as we hear the word, learn the word by putting in operation in our life and walking in it, doing it consistently, we will gain spiritual understanding, and then we will obtain the counsel of the Lord. We also saw out of Romans 11:34 how the mind of Christ is shown to be the same as having counselors, because as you get the mind of Christ in you, He is your counselor through the Word of God that He brings forth and writes in our mind. It's also the counsel of God is always according to the will of God. It will always be in line with the Word. Another scripture we saw out of Proverbs 3:32 where those who get the secret counsel of the Lord, which is the word in the Hebrew, are those that are righteous. If we're not righteous, we won't be in a position to receive the counsel of the Lord, which is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. And then as we hear and obey the word of God, God gives you counsel. God wants us to understand that we should be always ready to take hold of the word, do it, walk in it, if we're really going to get the counsel of God. He's not going to give it to people that are just wanting to hear something and find out facts for themselves. It's because you are ready to obey it and to hearken unto it. Then he gives counsel unto us. One of the scriptures that we saw in the New Testament that you must understand is that God's counsel, it does not alter. He does not alter it whatsoever. In Hebrews chapter 6, in verse 17, Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, that's you and me, the immutability of his counsel. Immutability means the unalterableness or the unchangeableness of it. it he doesn't alter it. He's the Lord, he changes not. His counsel is something you can absolutely stand upon. He will bring it to pass. And he confirmed it by an oath because he swore by himself, swearing by none greater, and he made a covenant. Because of the covenant relationship, we know that the counsel of the Lord, He will bring it to pass in our life as we hear and we do what His Word says. 
We also spent quite a bit of time talking about how the enemy has evil counsel that he designs against us and seeks to bring against us in our life through many different ways. And we saw that as the, count, the enemy's counsel comes against us, if we yield to it, it will bring destructive effects in our life. But one of the scriptures that we saw that you need to be aware of is that the enemy's counsel that comes against us will not be successful. And the counsel, there's no counsel that will be against God's counsel that will be successful. Proverbs 21, verse 30. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. It doesn't matter what the enemy devises against you. It will not be successful against the Lord's counsel. If you get the counsel of the Lord in every situation, you will see victory come forth. And God will overcome all of the attacks of the enemy. We also see in Nehemiah. Nehemiah, we see over in chapter... Four, which we looked at this morning as well. In verse 15, came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us that God had brought their counsel to naught. Anything the enemy brings, the devil is not going to be able to prevail if you get God's counsel because God will bring their counsel to naught in this case. So they returned all of them to the wall where he'd gotten them off of building the wall. Everyone went back to his work. Of course, if we have the counsel of God, we won't even get turned away from the counsel of the Lord at all. and We won't be affected by what the enemy brings against us. The result of taking the enemy's counsel, it'll bring much destruction. It'll lead you in the way of sin and bring judgments upon you in your life. And you'll end up falling by your own counsel. These are all scriptures that we looked at this morning. One of the scriptures we looked at that we need to really take notice of is in Psalms. 13. Many people have taken counsel from their old soul or from hurts and wounds and damaged emotions, and that is a mistake. Psalms 13 starts out in verse 1 where he says, how, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord? He's thinking the Lord forgets him. God doesn't forget us. Forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Well, if he's hiding his face from you, it's because you would have sin in your life or you're not walking in the ways of the Lord. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? That's a mistake. You can't take counsel in your soul. You're to take counsel from the Word of God, which will be in the Spirit. It's going to lead you in the right path. Those that take counsel in their soul, they're following after their thoughts. They're following after their feelings. They're following after whatever desires that I want. That's why you cannot live unto yourself. You must turn away from following after feelings. Feelings are the voice of the flesh, and they'll deceive you. You must not let your feelings dictate what you do, especially for all you women, because men, women are emotional and they feel. There's nothing wrong with that as long as it's governed through the Word of God. You have to make sure that you don't follow, follow feelings that are contrary to the word. They can lead you astray. And also, sorrow in my heart. You have sorrow, you have grief, you have sadness, you have all these negative things that have come into you. If you listen to that, it'll lead you down a wrong path. You are to follow after the word of God. You are to follow after the way of the Spirit and walk in those ways. Otherwise, you're going to give place to the enemy. He says, how long shall my enemy be exalted over me? And he will come and bring destruction against you. One other scripture that we looked at, passage that I think is important for you to take heed to, it's over in Proverbs 1.23 and following. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. As God brings his reproof, his correction to you, then if you receive it and you repent, you turn, you receive that correction, he'll pour out his spirit unto you and bring revelation of his words. But if you won't, you'll end up walking the same way. You'll be following the counsel that's not of the Lord and it will lead you down a path of destruction. That's exactly what happened here. Because I've called, you refused. I've stretched out my hand, no man regarded. You said it not all my counsel, and what am none of my reproof. That's a mistake. We always need to be ready to repent. We always need to be ready to receive any reproof or any correction or the counsel of the Lord. I will laugh at your calamity. <clears throat> I will mock when your fear cometh. 
When your fear cometh as desolation, your destruction comes the world, when, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, because that's what the enemy will bring against you. What's, what, what's going to happen? They're going to call upon me, but I'll not answer. They'll seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? They hated knowledge. They didn't choose the fear of the Lord, which is necessary to get God's counsel. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. It's a big mistake. They're going to eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You can't follow after your own way. You follow after your own way, you're going to walk in the way of destruction. You are to live unto him, not unto yourself. And the counsel of God will come unto you from the word of God to show you the things that God wants you to do. Now, we talked about also that if you don't take the counsel of the Lord and you reject it, you're going to go backwards in your spiritual life. It's not like you're just going to be just doing whatever you want and sitting in the same state. No, you'll end up going backwards. Jeremiah 7, 24. They hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but they walked in the counsels and imaginations of their evil heart, because they had sin in their heart, evil heart. And what happens? They go backwards, not forward. You won't just be standing still. You'll go backwards. God does not want you to go backward. He wants you to go forward in the things of the Lord. That's why we need to hearken, be obedient, be obedient, incline our ear into all the things he tells us to do, and walk in the counsel of the Lord, not in the counsel or imagination of our own desires, soulless realm, evil heart. Otherwise, you're going to end up going backward. Now, if we receive God's counsel, blessings are going to come upon us. In Exodus chapter 18, verse 19, Hearken now unto my voice. Hearken means to hear and obey. Not just hear only, but be ready to obey. I will give thee counsel. Those that are going to hear and obey, God will give his counsel to you. And what's going to be the result? God shall be with thee. God will manifest himself through the counsel that he gives you because you're following him. You're obeying him. You're doing the word. You can know that God is going to show up in your life. Over in Psalms, Chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You cannot follow ungodly counsel. Any counsel that you get for anything directing your life, it must be in line with the Word of God. Don't get it from ungodly sources. Don't get it from the world. Don't get it from the secular world out there or from some well-meaning friend or somebody that gives you their opinions or whatever. Don't ever listen to someone's opinion. Well, I think such and such. Well. If you, they aren't giving you chapter and verse and things in line with the word, there is a problem. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The counsel of the ungodly takes you down a path of destruction. We know that from verse 6. Because the way of the ungodly shall perish. So you want to be sure you're walking in the counsel of the Lord. You'll be blessed if you walk in his ways. You don't stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. But instead, the word is your source. Your delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. What's going to happen to you? You're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You get God's counsel and you get the word, you're going to prosper in everything that you do. That's what God wants for you in your life. In Psalms 25, in verse 14, the secret of the Lord, and this is a word which refers to, it's the word sowed in the Hebrew, used a few times, and it refers to like a secret counsel. The secret counsel of the Lord is with them that fear him. Those that meet the conditions, God will reveal specific things to you that he might not reveal to someone else because you've met the conditions. And what else will he do? The ones that have the fear of the Lord, he's going to show them his covenant. The secret counsel of the Lord will come to those that fear him, and he will bring revelation of the ways of the covenant. He just doesn't reveal himself to anybody. He reveals himself to those that meet the conditions, and he will show you his covenant and reveal the blessings unto you. Over in Psalms 33, in verse 10, The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. Any counsel that the enemy would bring against you or trying to work against you, 
If you trust in the Lord, get his counsel, he'll bring it to naught. He makes the devices of the people of none effect. It doesn't matter what the enemy's up to. You get the counsel of the Lord, it will stop the works of the enemy. There's no counsel that will be successful against the things of the Lord. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. What's the counsel of the Lord? It's his thoughts that come from his heart. You want to get his thoughts. Remember, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. You want to get his thoughts in you, and they're going to come through the word in you. And God then will quicken his word up to you, which is his thoughts coming to you to show you the things that he wants you to do, because the counsel will always be in line with the word of God. So when the word comes up to you, pay attention. God's speaking to you. He's trying to give you his counsel, his leading, his guiding in you. And those thoughts that come in line with the word are coming from him. In Psalm 73, Psalm 73, the counsel of the Lord will lead you and guide you in the way that you should go. Psalm 73, 24, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. God's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. You want to be sure you get the counsel of the Lord because that's what's going to lead you. Many Christians have made mistakes continually and what they've done because they did not get the counsel of the Lord. They did not get led by the things of the Lord. He'll lead you by his spirit and he'll be leading you in line with the word of God, always in the way of uprightness, always in the way of righteousness. You need to get that counsel from him. He'll guide you with it so that he'll lead you, remember, step by step. The steps are not in man. God's the one who orders your steps and leads you and guides you in what he has for you. Over in Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. You need the counsel of the Lord. But in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Be sure, though, the counsel is coming from the word of God. <clears throat> Those people that are giving you the word. Not people just tell you their opinions or whatever. You gotta really watch what, what sources you are getting counsel from. You gotta be sure it's in line with the word. When you get the counsel from the Lord, there'll be safety. And this actually means salvation and deliverance because he'll show you the way to go and you'll come out of the problem areas in your life. When you get the counsel of the Lord also, in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15, it says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but he that hearkens, hearing and obeying, unto counsel, he's wise. It's going to produce wisdom in you because you're putting it in operation. Wisdom comes because of the application of the word in your life that you hear and do, and it will be imparted unto you. We see also in verse 20, Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. Those who bring a counsel of peace of the things of God, which is, this is the word actually, shalom, which means his wholeness, his soundness, his health, his prosperity. People are giving you counsel in line with the things that God purposes for you, which are the promises of God. It's going to produce joy in you because it will show you the way to walk in. And when you realize them, the joy will be there. People are giving you a bunch of doom and gloom and negativism. Don't listen to them. Get away from that. God, if they're calling you to repentance, they may show you what you need to correct, but they'll also show you what, you, what, what God will accomplish when you do make the correction. Remember the correction, the way God brought to the churches in Revelation 2 and 3? He'd usually tell them something maybe they were doing right, and then he'd tell them what they needed to do to correct the wrong areas, and then he'd tell them what would be the results if they would correct themselves. There should be somebody to giving you the promise of God if they're bringing something. Some are just telling you a bunch of negatives all the time and not telling you the answer of what you need to hear to, that'll lead you down a right path. That's not someone you want to listen to. That counselor's just being judgmental and negative. A lot of people give that kind. They just tell you all your pro problems and tell you negatives without giving you the word that's going to show you the way to possess the promises. That is going to produce joy in you. Otherwise, counsel that comes, is it producing joy in you because you know, hey, this is the right answer, this is what I need to do? Or is it kind of beating you down and bringing condemnation on you and cutting you down? Well, that's not going to be counsel that's going to be from the Lord whatsoever. 
Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised, or those who have gotten counsel, is wisdom. God wants you to be well-advised. He wants you to get the counsel of the Lord. That is going to produce wisdom in your life. Another thing that we see in chapter 15, verse 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. It means they're frustrated. They'll be hindered. But in the multitude of counselors, we already saw it bring safety, but here it says they're going to be established. Otherwise, the purposes that God has for you, instead of them getting frustrated, you get the counsel of God, you get the leading of God of what He wants you to do, then the, that's going to be established to be the right thing. And you're going to walk in it and you're going to see the promises come to pass. We also see in Proverbs 19, verse 20, Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest wise in thy latter end. Notice, getting the counsel of the Lord, we've seen it several places, is a prerequisite for you to get wisdom. And the Bible says get wisdom. It's the principal thing. You need to get wisdom so you know what to do in every situation. Hear counsel. Receive instruction or discipline or correction. You've got to be correctable. So you might be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So you've got to watch what's coming out of your heart. You might have a lot of evil in your heart. You might have bitterness in your heart. You might have a lot of sorrow and negativism in your heart. You cannot trust what's coming out of your heart if it's not in line with the Word of God. Something that's coming from God that's put in your heart will be in line with the Word and it'll bring peace, joy. It will direct you in the right path. It'll show you what God wants to accomplish. And the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. It will produce results and you will see God bring forth victory. We see a scripture in Proverbs 20, verse 18. Interesting scripture. Every purpose is established by counsel. You want to see the purposes of God? You need to get the counsel of the Lord. You need to get what He wants you to do. And with good advice or good counsel, you make war. You want to have the counsel of God to make war. The counsel of God comes from His Word. Many people try to enter into spiritual warfare without really knowing the counsel of God. They don't understand it yet. That's why I always tell them, get the teaching down before you start in deliverance, first of all. Get the teaching down in areas before you really can engage in the intercession and be successful in conquering the enemies in the realm of the Spirit. With good counsel, we're going to be able to make war and we're going to be effective. Many people just try to jump into things and they don't have the counsel of the Lord established and they're not going to be successful. We see another scripture that goes along with this. Proverbs 24, verse 6, By wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. Because you want to be successful. You don't want to try to engage in war. Many Christians have tried to engage in war and got beat up by the devil because they didn't understand how, what all they needed to know. And they become wounded warriors, you know, and they got beat up and then they draw back from, from the fight. That's a mistake. If you got the word in you and you got the counsel of the Lord first, then you'll know what you're up against and how to deal with things successfully. And you'll make spiritual warfare and it will be successful and it will bring forth victory in your life. Over in Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 26. I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors as at the beginning. God set judges over them, didn't he? Not kings. The judges were the ones who were supposed to be ruling over them, but they were ones that were usually prophets or ones that were hearing from the Lord, seers. And the counselors at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness and the faithful city. That's what you and I are to be. We're to be the place where righteousness is prevailing and we are faithful and we are seeing God's counsel and the leading of by what those ones who uh, have the Spirit of God are going to lead and guide. The judges all have the Spirit of God and we were anointed of the Lord to lead them and guide them in what they should be doing. God wants you to be a city of righteousness and He wants you to be faithful. As you follow the way of the Lord with His counsel, He will lead you into possessing the victory in your life. Over in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. 
The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I've thought, so shall it come to pass. See, when God sets things, it's going to happen. As I've purposed, so shall it stand. You find out what God's purposes are and what His counsel is and what He wants done, and you do what He says, it's going to come to pass as long as you carry it out. A lot of people, though, they haven't seen it come to pass because they got deceived by the enemy instead of getting the counsel of the Lord. And his counsel was that he was going to break the Assyrian in the land, bring destruction against him. That's the purpose that I purposed upon the whole earth. This is the hand that stretched out upon all the nations. The Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? His hand stretched out, who shall turn it back? See, when you get the counsel of God, you got to know it's going to come to pass. God's leading, His counsel will, show, will always show you what to do and you'll be successful. God doesn't win a few and lose a few, He wins them all. And He wants you to win them all. He doesn't want you ever to back down to the enemy. God's counsel will always be for you to do what the Word says, to conquer, to overcome, never to draw back. And He will always show you what you need to know. He'll show you the enemy's plans. He'll give you revelation, the things that you need to know. In Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 17, he says, The land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Everyone that makes mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he's determined against it. When you've got God's counsel, oh, the enemy is going to be defeated for sure. Because whenever he shows you the steps to take, it's going to lead you in a path that will bring forth victory in your life. We see another scripture. Counsel is always going to direct you in the way of righteousness and to deal with sin. Here was the counsel that Daniel gave to the king. It was from the Lord. It was God the right counsel. He said, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Did he listen to him? No, and ended up having the destructive effect where he ended up being out there, you know, in the dew, you know, he was out, he lost his mind. He was out, out lost his, he was like he'd become a mental case because he did not follow the way of the Lord. You're going to break off your sins and the effects of them by turning to righteousness, doing what is right. And here he was talking about showing mercy to the poor. The king did not hearken to it. He did not see the results. We've got to learn to, con 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 uh, to hearken unto the counsel of the Lord if you're going to see God perform His word. If not, you're going to see destruction come. Jeremiah 23, verse 22. If they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. That's what should have happened. But they didn't. They didn't stand in the counsel of the Lord, and they didn't cause the people to hear the word of God. That's what they needed to hear, so they could have turned from the evil way. That's why we've got to get the counsel of the Lord and hear the word of God, so that you and I will turn from any evil ways, and we will walk in the ways of the Lord and see God bring forth what He purposes in our life. He will do great things for us. We've got to be ready to hearken to His counsel. You know, in the New Testament, there's those that hark hearkened to the counsel of the Lord, did what He wanted them to do, and there's ones that didn't. Luke chapter 7. Here's where it talks about the Pharisees and the lawyers. Did they listen to what Jesus said and what John the Baptist told them to do here as far as being baptized? No. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of Him. They were supposed to be baptized this first step to come into the priesthood, but they rejected the counsel of the Lord. If you reject the counsel of the Lord, you're not going to enter into the things that God has for you. But we also, here we see a testimony of one who walked in the counsel of the Lord. In Acts chapter 13, over in verse 36, speaking of David, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on a sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. What did he do? He served his own generation by the will of God. The word will here is the word for counsel, translated counsel, 10 of the 12 times. 
It means, it's not the word for will, that's the word fellow. This is the word for counsel. He served his own generation by the counsel of God, and he was successful. That's what God wants you to do. It's going to enable you to serve God acceptably and to do the works of God and accomplish all the things that he purposes for you. And remember, as they went forth and they were preaching the gospel, what's the, what, the word is the counsel of God unto you. Acts 20, verse 27. Here's the testimony. I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. That's why we've got to hear the word on all subjects and walk in the light of it so we see God bring forth what he purposes. Also, as the gifts of the Holy Spirit are an operation in your life, God will use you to bring forth revelation of things that people need to know to reveal the counsel of the hearts. 1 Corinthians 4, 5, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who doth bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Well, that's also what happens in the gifts of the Spirit. It talks about in 1 Corinthians 14, where they would reveal the secrets of their hearts in order to bring them to the place of repentance. God will make manifest the counsels of the hearts in order to bring forth praise for those who are walking right, or there'll be judgments for those who are walking wrong. We've got to be ready to hearken unto what God wants for us. Now, as we receive the counsel of God, we'll be blessed. But if we don't receive the counsel of God, we're going to see the repercussions of it. We're going to see the destruction. We see even the very beginning, back in Genesis chapter 2, what was the counsel that God gave to Adam? Verse 15, he took the Lord, the Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. He was supposed to guard it. The word keep means to guard, shamar. The Lord God commanded the man. Remember, the counsel of God comes to you as his commands. He commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. That was God's command, which was his counsel unto him. Did he obey? No. He made a big mistake. Genesis 3.6 when the woman saw the tree was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, and she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Remember, she was deceived, but he wasn't. He knew what he was doing, and what a mistake. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14 reveals that. Adam was not deceived. He knew what he was doing. But the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. And what happened because of Adam knowing what he was doing and disobeying God's word? Of course, he died spiritually immediately. And what did he do? Romans 5, 12, not only did it affect him, but it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. Every single death, spiritual death came upon the entire human race because of the sin as he passed the authority into the hands of Satan who became the ruler of this world and the God over mankind, became the spiritual father of mankind, all because he didn't listen to the counsel of the Lord. God wants you to be obedient to the commands. All the commands are his counsel unto you. If you don't do his commands, then we're rejecting the counsel of the Lord. How about Eve? Remember we also talked about how we can be deceived by not knowing the word, because the counsel of the Lord comes by knowing the word. If you don't know the word, you can easily be deceived. Remember, the devil comes to try to take the word out of your heart. Well, in Genesis chapter 3, look what happened with Eve. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So he's testing her to see whether what she knows. The devil will find out what you know. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, that means the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. 
Is that what God said? No, he didn't say such a thing. Number one, what was the tree in the midst of the garden? He's saying you can't eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. Well, let's see what God said. Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight, good for food, the tree of life also in the midst. Same word, middle of the garden. What was the tree in the middle of the garden? The tree of life. That's what they were supposed to partake of. Did she have things right? No. She didn't have the word straight whatsoever. And also, she said, you're not going to eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Was there any discussion about touching it? No. He said, you don't eat of it. So she adds to the word here, and she has the, she's wrong on the other thing, doesn't have it straight whatsoever. She's an easy candidate to be deceived because she didn't get the word in her. The word of God is the counsel of God, so we will walk in the ways of the Lord. So what happened? If you don't know the word, you don't have the counsel of God, you'll be deceived easily. Many people make decisions all the time without thinking, what does the Word say? That's the counsel of God to you. If you just make decisions because I feel like this, or I think this, or I want this, or, well, it seems good to me, all these kind of things. Remember, the Bible says man see, walks after whatever seems good in his own sight. <laughs> he's walking all, all these crazy ways, and he's not seeing God's victory. He's not walking after the counsel of God. So, of course, she, she got, ended up getting, of course, moved by the senses. The woman saw the tree was good for food, pleasant to the eyes. Is that what we walk by? No, we don't walk by the flesh. We don't walk by the senses. Those people that walk by the flesh and by the senses are walking by us from the flesh influence and from the soul. A tree to be desired to make one wise, I'll get wisdom from, from that? No. God is the one who brings that. She was way off base, wasn't she? She took her the fruit thereof and didn't eat. Of course, she was deceived because she didn't have the word in her. Without the word in you, you will not walk in the counsel of God. Remember, the ones who had meditated on the word and their delight was in the word, those are the ones that were blessed. Those are the ones that didn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. God wants you to make sure that you're walking in the ways of the Lord, putting the word of God first place. Otherwise, you won't walk after the counsel of God. Genesis chapter 4. Here we speak about Cain. Verse 3. In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Is that what he was supposed to do? Was that the counsel of God to him? No. Not at all. Abel brought of the firstlings of the flock and the fat thereof. That was the best part, which is the tithe. The Lord had respect unto Abel, because it was the tithe, and his offering. Unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect, because he just brought an offering, whatever he decided to, instead of following what God directed him to do. So Cain was wroth, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If you do well, now how would he know to do well? Because God had already told him what to do. He obviously had told them what they were supposed to bring, Abel obeyed, the other one he did not. Cain did not obey. He did what he wanted to do. If you don't follow what God says in his word, are you following the counsel of God? No. What's going to happen? He says, if you do well, you'll be, shall you not be accepted? If you do not well, sin lies at the door. That's exactly what will happen. Anytime you and I don't do the word, we're going to commit sin. Remember, he that knoweth to do good and doeth not at sin, even sins of omission, or all unrighteousness is sin, or whatsoever is not of faith is sin. We don't do the things that he says. So, of course, what happened? <laughs> Talked with his brother Abel. Comes to pass, they're in the field, he rises up and kills him. Instead of repenting over what he did, he continues to make another mistake. Going in the wrong path, and the result was he's cursed. God wants us to make sure that we think on what the Word says. If God has given you a directive in the Word of God, you need to take heed to it and do it. That's the counsel of the Lord unto you. Many people, they hear things, they see things, they feel things, and they follow that, whatever their feelings are. 
and they wonder why it led them down a wrong path. If it is not in line with the word, do not follow it. It is going to lead you down a path of destruction. How almost have all the cults come into being? They had some feeling, something they saw, some so-called revelation and so forth that came to them. Did they check it out in line with the word? No. And they got deceived and they went to start going down a wrong path. God wants us to get the counsel of the Lord. Now, if you get the counsel of the Lord, you obey him, you're going to be blessed. Remember, the whole earth was full of wickedness. But there was one person who found grace in the sight of the Lord because he got the counsel of God. He received what God told him to do. Verse 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect, or without blemish, this means, in his generations, Noah walked with God. He walked with the Lord. In the midst of all the rest of these ones that were walking in ungodliness and unrighteousness. Verse 22, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. He obeyed God's commands. That's how you get the counsel of God to you. And then in chapter 7, he says, Noah said, the Lord said to Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for I have thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. If he sees that you're righteous, he's going to be blessed. The, the righteous are the ones that get blessed. He was declared to be righteous. And in verse 5, again, the Lord, Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. What happened to him? He got saved. You follow the counsel of the Lord, you're going to get saved. You're going to get preserved. You're going to get delivered. You're going to be set free, and you're going to be protected from the evil. And that's exactly what happened for him. But then we come to Abram. Abram made some big mistakes. Genesis chapter 15, verse 4. Well, we back up to verse 3. Abram says, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. So he's saying, This guy's mine heir. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. So he was telling him, This is not going to be the one. Well, we come to chapter 16. Sarah. Abram's wife bare him no children. She had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing, I pray thee, going into my may, it may be that I may obtain children by her. You're not going to obtain children by her. She's going to obtain children. Abram, Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. What a mistake. He should have listened to what the Lord told him instead of listening to the voice that was contrary to the things that God had told him. Of course, gave her here to be husband of Abraham, to be his wife. And of course, what did we get? We got Ishmael, and what do we got today? A big mess in the world. It wasn't the child of promise, was it? But God, of course, he's going to bring forth what he purposes, even though some mistakes were made along the way. This is where God appeared to him again, showed up, and he said to Abram in verse 15, As for Sarah thy wife, you shall not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I'll bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. You see, he didn't get the counsel of the Lord when they were when the, going along. They didn't seek the Lord and find out what he wanted. They decided to do it their own way. What a mistake. Abraham fell upon his face, laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that's a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that's ninety years old bear? He laughed about it. Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. No, he wasn't the one. It was a big mistake. God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, thou shalt call his name Isaac. I'll establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed, that's Christ it's talking about, after him the one who was going to bring forth, the, of course, the redemption. Well, we come down to chapter 18. The Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre and sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. He shows up. In verse 9, they say to him, these ones, the three that showed up, 
Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. He said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore she laughed within herself, saying, I'm to wax old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And so the Lord said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I have a surety bear a child which am old? You don't laugh at what the things that God says. If God says it, it's going to come to pass. Well, that was a big mistake. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Don't ever think there's anything too hard for the Lord. God is a God who is a performer of his word. If you have the promise of God, he'll bring it to pass. At the time appointed, I'll return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not. She was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. She tried to cover it up by lying. Here, instead of believing the word of God, she made a big mistake. And boy, they made mistakes. But you know, they did get on board. Abraham finally got to the place where he was on board. And also, Sarah got to the same place. You know, Sarah had to get her faith in operation to have this child. It wasn't just Abraham alone. Because Hebrews chapter 11 in the faith chapter records, verse 11, through faith also Sarah herself received this is the word lambano, took hold of. Strength, which is the word dunamis, power, to conceive seed. She took hold of that with her faith. The one who that was in doubt to begin with. And was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who'd promised. She didn't believe at first. Then she turned and she got herself right. Maybe you've made some mistakes. Well, get yourself right. Believe God's word. Don't doubt God's word. If he's given a promise, he is able to perform it. His word is true. Believe the counsel of God. Know that he is faithful who's promised and he will bring these things to pass in your life. We gotta be ready to respond to the counsel of God. Moses was one who continually obeyed God. He, had, he was meek, he was tremendously obedient. But he made a big mistake too because he didn't follow the counsel of God what was spoken to him. You know, whatever God speaks to us, he wants us to hearken to it. We can't just play pick and choose with the things and just make decisions on ourselves, on our own mind. Many people, they don't get the counsel of God or when they do get it, they don't follow it through. Numbers chapter 20, verse seven, the Lord spake to Moses saying, take the rod, gather thou the assembly together, Thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. He said, Speak. He's supposed to speak, wasn't he? And it shall give forth as water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So shalt thou give the congregation their beast drink. Simple thing to obey. Should have obeyed it. So what's he do? He takes the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and said, Here now, you rebels, must we fetch water out of this rock? He lifts up his hand with the rod and he smote the rock twice. Was he supposed to do that? No. It cost him going in the promised land because he disobeyed. Water came out abundantly. The congregation drank. God was still going to help them. But he spake to Moses and Aaron and said, Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation the land which I have given them. He did not take them in. God wants you and I to know we need to be obedient or else going to be ramifications. In this case, it cost him because he was disobedient. What about when they went to possess the land and sent the spies out? Numbers chapter 13, verse 27. Remember they were sent and one, all the different tribes went out? And verse 26, when they kept searching out the land, they brought back word unto them. All the whole congregation showed them the fruit of the land that they'd found. So this is the land that God said, I'm gonna give you and you're supposed to go possess it. And they said, we came into the land. This is their testimony initially. We came into the land which thou sentest and surely it flow with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it, this is the place. 
Nevertheless, though, that means, well, I know your word says such and such, but, yeah, I know this is the fruit of the land, but, anytime you say, well, I know the word says this, but, you're in trouble. You're rejecting the counsel of God. You're saying, yeah, I know it, but, I hear lots of people say that. Well, I know God's a healer, but, well, I know I can cast out the demons, but, and they'll try every other way of doing things instead of following God's way. No, God's word will work and he will perform his word. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Enoch there. God had already delivered them from all kinds of enemies and smote all their enemies, and now they're thinking because these, guys, these enemies are strong, big deal. God already had delivered them from so many giants and conquered them, conquered enemies before, and they saw the children of Enoch, the giants there. They were moved by what? They were moved by what they saw. Anytime you are moved by what you see instead of the word of God, you have rejected the counsel of God. You have gotten out of faith. You've gotten into the natural, and you're not going to see God manifest himself. He's a God who performs his word in faith. What's the victory that overcomes the world? Our faith. What will move every mountain? Our faith. What will receive every promise? Our faith. How do you cast out the demons? With your faith. Why couldn't they cast them out, the, those ones? He said, because you're unbelief. He, we and I must operate in faith. Ah, they saw the children of Anak there. And they were all over the place. So, verse 13, or verse 30. Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and he said, let us go up at once and possess it. We're well able to overcome it. That's a guy that's got his eyes on the word and on what he said the land had, all this fruit in it. And he says, let's go. He's ready to obey. That's what God wants from you. When the counsel of God comes to you, he wants you to be obedient. He wants you to go forth and do what he says. Let us go up at once and obedient. Prompt obedience to the word of God. Not hesitating, not wondering, questioning. No. We're well able to overcome it. They believed that God had already given them victory over enemies. He'd given victory over every enemy. The men that went up with them said, We be not able to go up against the people because they're stronger than we. Who are they identifying with? Themselves. What about God? That's not even in their thoughts. They're more thinking about themselves. Anytime you look at yourself in the flesh, in the natural, in your own abilities, you're always going to miss the counsel of God because you're not going to do anything. God's the one that's going to do it through you. You're just a vessel to release him. Remember, the works that are done is by God's power. You're just a vessel. When you go, you cast out the demons. You think you're doing it? You're just speaking it so God does it through you. You aren't oper doing it. You're just a vessel to speak forth for him to accomplish it. Well, they were deceived. So you've got to know that God is going to bring things forth. They brought up an evil report of the land. They searched out. Remember, they said it was the one filled with milk and honey and the fruit of it. Now, what did they, what, they changed their tune, didn't they? Ah, we've gone to search it. It's a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. How, how do we get a change in the way our view of the land? Yeah, if you don't see things from God's perspective, you will get deceived and you'll have a different outlook. And that's what happened with them. They didn't see things clearly anymore in the realm of the spirit. They saw things in the natural and they had deceived themselves. And the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. You can tell they deceived their own selves because they said we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, saw, 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 saw. And come of the giants, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. They deceived themselves. And so we were in their sight. They believed that the enemy thought they were grasshoppers. Many people, I've heard people say, oh, the devil has such great power. Why would you think that? Yes, he has power, but so what? God's power is stronger than the power of the enemy. You can overcome him. Do not think that you can't conquer the enemies in your life. I don't care how much power they got. God has given you authority and power over all the power of the enemy. And you can conquer everything. He made you more than a conqueror. There's no enemy that can stand against you. Do not believe that you can't get the victory over any enemies. That's what they believed. 
They didn't believe the truth. So did they have the counsel of God? No, they threw it away. God said, this is the land. Caleb had it. We're well able to go up and possess it. He was tuned in. And he knew what was the right thing. But these guys weren't. They were deceived by the enemy. God wants us to make sure that we believe the truth. And what happened with him? Well, Caleb's the one who kept the word. See, remember, the devil comes to take the word out of your heart. If he gets it out of your heart, you won't have the counsel of God. You can't manufacture it in your mind. It's from the word in you that produces that. Otherwise, you'll be deceived like those other guys were. In Joshua chapter 14, we see over in verse 7, here's Caleb. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. That's the key. He kept the word in his heart. You're going to have the counsel of God when the word is in your heart, but you've got to keep it in your heart. You cannot let the devil come and take it out, or you cannot let other things come in and get double-hearted or double-minded or two-souled. You're not going to be able to see anything come to pass. You've got to be, have the word in your heart. That's what he had. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt because they didn't have the word and they spoke lies. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. That shows you the guy who's going to have the counsel of God is the one who wholly follows the Lord. And you're not going to be deceived as those guys were deceived. And it cost them. They all died out in the land. They were even men of war that were trained up and they all died out instead of entering in except for Caleb and Joshua. Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. God wants you to wholly follow him. Put the word of God first place. Always check things out in line with the word. Get the counsel of God in every situation so you follow him and obey him and do the things that he tells you to do. Well, what happened for him? Now behold, the Lord's kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, he never let the word go out of him. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and lo, I'm this day fourscore and five years old. He's eighty-five now. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Your spiritual strength should never diminish. It should always be there. In fact, it should be increasing and abounding. If you have the counsel of God, you've got the word of God in you unless you let the devil come in and deceive you. Well, he didn't. He says, Now therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims, Anakims were there. There were all the giants. The cities were great and fenced. If I, so be the Lord will be, with, will be with me, then I'll be able to drive them out. And how's the Lord with you? When you have the counsel of God, the Lord is with you. We saw that scripture. And how do you have the counsel of God? when you have the Word in you, and you have the Word in your heart, and your focus is upon what He tells you to do. That's what God wants. Otherwise, you'll be deceived. And that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to deceive you. Remember, you can't manufacture faith. You can't manufacture belief and all these things. It's because of the Word in you that produces that. That's why guarding the Word in your heart is absolutely essential for you. We must do it. We'll look at one last one for tonight. Gideon. Gideon was one who accomplished what God wanted. Judges chapter 6. He followed what the Lord told him to do. He didn't think about things in the natural. The Midianites are coming, and all these guys come out for the fight. 32,000 of them show up for the fight. Well, is that going to work? Angel says, The Lord's with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And, of course, Midianites had taken them captive. But God had a means, of course, he was going to use Gideon to conquer all these enemies. But before this could happen, he had to have the ones who could fight the fight and be victorious. Verse 3 of chapter 7, he said, now, therefore, go to and proclaim in the ears of the people, this is of the 32,000 that came out for the battle, 
Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. 22,000 had to go home. They weren't fit for the battle. If you've got fear, you're not fit for the battle. You won't be able to conquer the enemy. You've let the enemy come into you. You don't have the counsel of the Lord in you. We've let the devil come in. There remain 10,000. Well, uh, well, maybe that'll be good. The Lord said to Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down the water and I'll try them for thee there. He's going to test them. God's going to test you. He's going to test you whether you keep the word in your heart, whether you walk in the word, whether you're going to believe God's word, and you're going to do what he says, go forth, knowing that he, with his counsel, that will nothing can stand against the counsel of the Lord. You're going to conquer the enemies in your life. I'll try them. It shall be the, those that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. He had to be obedient too. He couldn't reason it out and decide, well, why would that be so? No, he had to do what God said. Brought down the people in the water. The Lord said to Gideon, everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down his knees to drink. The number of them that lap, putting their hand to their mouth. Otherwise, they're watching while they're drinking. Were 300 men. All the rest of the people stuck their heads down in the water. They bowed their head then they're down upon their knees to drink water. So they weren't watching. What's that show you? Only the ones who have no fear and are watching so they don't give place to the enemy's attacks will be fit for the battle to be able to go in and get the victory. And of course, all the rest of those guys had to go home. The Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men that lap will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. God will bring forth victory for those who follow his counsel and meet his conditions and have the word in them. The key is, though, we got to do what he says. Gideon did what he said. He didn't sit there and reason in his mind, you know, like these other guys did, you know. Oh, look at all these enemies. They're too big for us. They're stronger than we. We're grasshoppers and all this stuff. He didn't sit there and say, look at these Midianites. We had 32,000 and now you're saying only 300. In the mind, it doesn't make any sense, doesn't it? But you don't follow by your mind or your feelings or what it looks like. You follow the word by obedience to what God tells you to do. Whatever he says, do it. And if you carry it out, the counsel of nothing can stand against the counsel of the Lord because he will direct you in the right path. And of course, by the 300, they won the victory. They ended up smiting them all and defeating all of the Midianites as they went forth and did the things that God called them to do. God wants you to get the counsel of the Lord. Those that obey God will have the counsel of the Lord. Those that disobey, reject the counsel. They won't see God move in their life. In fact, they'll see destruction of all kinds. They'll see calamities come. They'll see all types of destructive things. And the devil comes, remember, and he comes to deceive. We talked about that this morning, how he comes to deceive, how he comes to get you to turn away. He tries to bring fear into you. He'll speak against you. He tries to come bring negative thoughts into your mind. He tries to get a hold of your mouth so you'll speak wrong words. Anything to get you out of the spirit and get you off of the word of God. If he can get you off the word, he's got you. The word in you is the way you're going to see victory because God is the word. And how does he manifest himself? Through the word that you put in operation. That's why when you pray, what do you pray? We sing that song all the time. We pray the word. Why? That puts God in operation. It's not you just praying whatever you want. That's not going to go anywhere. He's not going to respond to that. He's going to respond to the word that you pray because that's what puts him in operation. See, it's the word in you. That's the counsel of God. Just I'm reminded of how many people, many, many people who prayed the job prayer which is simply scriptures and prayed it consistently. And they saw God bring forth jobs that they couldn't get before. Because what they do? They prayed the word. I just had someone just tell me the other day, again, another person, how they had gotten a job as they prayed the job prayer. What is it? It's just praying the word. They just didn't pray what they wanted. They put the word in operation and they saw the results. Why? Because that's the counsel of God. The counsel of God unto you must always be in line with the word. 
if you just do whatever you feel like or whatever seems right in your own sight or whatever I want to do, you're never going to have the counsel of God. The counsel of God always must be in line with the Word and the Holy Spirit will always take the things from above and show them unto you. It will always be in line with the Word. And when you get that, you are going to see God bring forth His promises, His blessings, and you are going to see victory come forth in your life. That's why the necessity of us obtaining the counsel of the Lord. If we don't get the counsel of the Lord, the enemy will defeat us. Why have we not seen everything that we put our hand to prosper? Why have we not seen everything that we have prayed come to pass? It must be that we haven't done things right because God never fails. If you pray the word, speak the word, do the word, act on it, follow the counsel of the Lord, and you stay in faith and not let the enemy out place, you will see God bring forth victory after victory after victory. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the revelation of the counsel of the Lord, which is the word of God. I thank you that I am going to get the counsel of the Lord in every situation because I will think, what does the word say? I will never follow my thoughts, my feelings, my desires, or anything that's contrary to the word. I thank you that as I obey and do what the word says, I have the counsel of God. And as the counsel of God is put into operation, I will see the promises come to pass. I will see the counsel be performed. The counsel will not be frustrated. There is no counsel against the counsel of the Lord. It will always come to pass. And I will prosper. I will be blessed. I will see God bring forth all of his promises in my life. I will not have any more failures. I will have success in everything that I do. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to make sure that I get the counsel of the Lord and check everything out in line with the word. Then I will see the promises of God come to pass in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. The counsel of the Lord is his word. Without it, you'll just be spinning your wheels in the natural. That's why I always say, again, getting back to prayer. Well, if you are praying and you're not praying what the word says, what are you praying? It's whatever I think, whatever I want to pray. And people think that that's acceptable prayer and that he's going to respond to that. No, he's not. He's going to respond to the word, everything that I do. He's got to be in line with the word. Start doing it. Watch God do great things and he will bring forth his blessings in your life. Father, we thank you. We see the necessity of obtaining the counsel of the Lord from what we saw the principles this morning and we saw the works of the enemy this morning, how he works. And Father, we thank you that you will bring forth your blessings, your promises to pass as we have the counsel of the Lord. We know that you will manifest yourself and there's no counsel that any, any, any enemy will be able to bring that will be successful against you. In fact, you'll bring all the counsel of the enemy to naught, and we will see you perform your word exactly as you said. We're going to believe your word, trust your word, do exactly what you said, knowing it's the counsel of the Lord, and know that you're going to bring your promises to pass. Father, I thank you for every single one of us walking in prosperity, victory, freedom, liberty, and seeing the word of God come to pass in all areas of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.